Hello Walnut Class and anybody else that's listening. Today I'm going to read you The Smartest Giant in Town. George was a giant, the scruffiest giant in town. He always wore the same pair of old brown sandals and the same old patched up gown. I wish I wasn't the scruffiest giant in town, he said sadly. But one day George noticed a new shop. It was full of smart clothes, so he bought a smart shirt, a smart pair of trousers, a smart belt, a smart stripy tie, some smart socks with diamonds up the sides, and a pair of smart shiny shoes. Now I'm the smartest giant in town, he said proudly. George left his old clothes behind in the shop. He was about to go home when he heard a sound. On the pavement stood a giraffe who was sniffing, sniffing sadly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my neck, said the giraffe. It's so very, very long and so very cold. I wish I had a long, warm scarf. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his stripy tie. It didn't match my socks anyway, he said, as he wound it round and round the giraffe's neck. It made a wonderful scarf. Thank you, said the giraffe. As George strode away home, he sang, him, sang to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe, but look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a river and on a boat stood a goat who was bleating loudly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sail, said the goat. It blew away in a storm. I wish I had a strong new sail for my boat. Cheer up, said George, and he tore off his new white shirt. It kept coming untucked anyway, he said, as he tied it to the mast of the goat's boat. It made a magnificent sail. Thank you, said the goat. George strode on singing to himself, my tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe, my shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat, but look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a tiny ruined house. Beside the house stood white mice with lots of baby mice and they're all squeaking. What's the matter, asked George. It's our house, squeaked the mother mouse. It's burnt down. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his shiny shoes. It was giving me blisters anyway, he said, as the mouse and her babies scrambled inside. The shoe made a perfect home for them. Thank you, they squeaked. George had to hop along the road now, but he didn't mind as he hopped and sang to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt is a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. But look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a campsite. Beside a tent stood a fox who was crying. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sleeping bag, said the fox. It dropped in a puddle. I wish I had a warm, dry sleeping bag. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his socks with diamonds up the sides. It was tickling my toes anyway, he said, as the fox snuggled into it. It made a very fine sleeping bag. Thank you, said the fox. George hopped on singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt is on a boat for a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a big squelchy bog. and Beside the bog stood a dog who was howling. What's the matter? asked George. It's my bog, said the dog. It, I need to get across, but I keep getting stuck in the mud. I wish there was a safe dry path. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his smart new belt. 
It was squashing my tummy anyway, he said, as he laid it down over the bog and it made an excellent path. Thank you, said the dog. The wind started to blow, but George didn't mind. He hopped on singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt is on a boat for a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. My belt helped a dog who's crossing a bog. But... My trousers keep falling down and I'm the coldest giant in town. Suddenly George felt sad and shivery and not at all smart. He stood on one foot and thought, I'll have to go back to the shop and buy some more clothes, he decided. He turned round and hopped all the way back to the shop. But when he got there, it was closed. Oh no, cried George. He sank down onto the doorstep and a tear ran down his nose. He felt as sad as all the animals he'd ever had met on his way home. Then out of the corner of his eye, he saw a bag with some familiar, something familiar poking out of the top. George took a closer look. My gown, he yelled, my dear old gown and sandals. George put them on. They felt wonderfully comfortable. I'm the cosiest giant in town, he cried and he danced back home along the road. Outside his front door stood all the animals he had helped. They were carrying an enormous present. Come on, George, they said, open it. George untied the ribbon and inside was a beautiful gold paper crown and a card. Look inside the card, George, said the animals. George put the crown on his head and opened the card. Inside it said, you gave us your scarf to a cold giraffe, your shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat, your shoe is, in a, is a house for a little white mouse, one of your shoes is a bed for a fox, your belt helped a dog who was chasing, crossing a bog, so here is a very fine crown to go with your sandals and your gown of the kindest giant in town. The end.